Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeremy. I am the principal consultant of Edson, and welcome to Edson Webinar. Right? Our topic today is on tackling the coronavirus and how the BCP help. Okay? Right? BCP, if you do not know, is business continuity planning. And with me today are two very distinguished gentlemen, right? Both of which I've known for quite some time. But before I introduce them, let me just tell you a little bit more about myself, okay, and the company I'm from. Essen, we are a training consulting firm. We work with a lot of uh, MNCs and large local companies in Malaysia and around the region, right? As for myself, I am a chartered accountant, right? I have been, um, well, I started Essen, right, together with my partners more than 13, 18 years ago, 2003, and today, what I do predominantly is I help a lot of organizations with their leadership management development, and also I do a lot of work in customer experience as well. Now, let me just introduce to you both the gentlemen that are with me today, okay? A uh, very quick one. I have known Henry for many years. We have, uh, uh, we have banter talk. He has even been in my conferences uh, once, talked in my conferences before. And so, but I know him to be one of the premier experts of business continuity planning in Asia, okay? He is the guy you go to in Singapore whenever there's a big conference, that big conference on this BCP belongs to him. His whole entire team organizes it in Singapore, whereby I, I believe two to 3,000 people will go for it every single year. So this is a premier you know, expert. So please, he's here with us. Ask him as many questions as possible. Now, the interesting thing about Zorab is he used to be my client. Okay, now we are working together on projects. Uh, he is from insurance, he is from banks, so the whole shebang. So what we'll do is allow the two gentlemen to introduce themselves, right? So gentlemen, you've got about a minute each. Please do a great introduction for us. Let's start with Henry. Henry, let's go with you first. Thank you. Very good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Henry E. Uh, I run BCP Asia. Right? Uh, in fact, we have a company registered in uh, KL Central as well, right? So uh, don't don't just. I, I would like to actually exchange more experience and uh, this uh, on business continuity at the same time, not only on Singapore but actually also the uh, current the MCO implementation in Kuala Lumpur and in entire Malaysia. The impact. Uh, I've been doing business continuity for close to twenty over a year, and uh, interesting thing is that every year actually during the Chinese New Year, I always receive a lot of call from friends and partner for greeting each other for the, this festival season. But interestingly, this year, most of the time I received a call is asking me how to do business continuity planning rather than uh, doing uh, this festival season greeting, right? So uh, business continuity is a very interesting industry. I think uh, for people that in a normal day, most people don't want to think about crisis because we always don't like to think about bad things. Huh? Yeah. But then when something happens, we will think that why we didn't think about that? This is a black swan. This is a, a great dinos, uh, right? Yeah. So it's something that uh, very difficult to to get business buy in. Uh, but we shall look at how how we can do this together better. Thank you. Okay. What about Zora? All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, really hoping that everybody is in a pink of health uh, and staying positive through these challenging times. So very briefly about me, uh, thanks for the introduction already, Jeremy. Yes, we were a uh, client relationship, now collaborative relationship, in, if, you, if you want to use it loosely. And just to also give you an insight, I was a participant in Henry's uh, workshop many years ago in Singapore. So this is also a testimony to him that uh, we have put into practice what, what was learned <laughs> and it did work. So uh, after spending more than 20, well, almost a quarter of my working life uh, in multinationals, predominantly in the financial industry, uh, insurance and banks. I've now stepped out on my own and I'm using this opportunity to share my experience. Uh, as what Henry said, business continuity planning or business continuity management in essence is really about mis risk mitigation. It's about how we look into the day-to-day -day worries that we have. What can we do? What can't we do? Is there anything within our control? What's beyond our control? And what can we plan for it? I mean. Uh, can we test it out and we see whether can we go through this because we know every day is a new learning uh, today's world has evolved so much and there's so much to learn out 
from this whole episode that we are all going through, not only Malaysia or Singapore, but the world. Yes. Over back to you, Jeremy. Right. Thank you very much, Shai, Lorak, and Henry for the great introduction. We are still having people coming in, but uh, we will continue anyway. Right. So everyone, just for you to remember, if you got any question to ask, please ask it on the chat group. Okay. Now. Uh, before we go any further, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to launch the poll for the day. For those of you who know my format, I'd like to know who my participants are in the room so that we can at least try as much as possible to address some of the issues that you have. So I'm going to launch a very simple poll. Uh, please answer this, okay? Please answer this so that we know of the 70 people at the moment, okay, who, who you are and what do you plan uh, to get from this session. Huh? So um, let me just launch the poll. Okay. Right. Now, everyone on the screen, you will see the poll. You should be able to click on it. Just click on it, right? And you should get some results very soon. Okay. No one has voted yet, so please vote their questions here. The first question I'm asking is your organization. How many people are there in your organization? So, if your organization has over 1,000 employees, state that your organization has over 1,000 employees. Okay. Uh, 76 to 200 employees. At least we have a good idea what kind of uh, size we're looking at. Okay, now, um, again, right, my organization preparation for BCP was, okay, three person actually answered so far, what is BCP? <laughs> Meaning, uh, nothing much was prepared, lah, uh, right? Mm, one says too sensitive to answer, okay. So please answer, all right, this is a good question to start, all right, I'm just going to give you another few more minutes, okay, a few more seconds so that we can get more people into the room before we really begin. Huh? Okay. I'll give you another 30 seconds. If you have not answered, please answer. Less than half the participants have answered. Hmm. All right. Okay. Please answer the question. Two questions. Just click. Hmm. Okay. I'm quite, sure you, I'm quite sure the first question applies to everyone. If you are less than 10 employees, just put less than 10 employees. Okay. All right. Hmm. Now, if you got a question for us, please put it into the chat box for the time being. Type it in, my team is here. My team will look and push the question to me. And I'll ask. Okay, I'm going to end polling. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and just to share the results, share the results. Okay, uh, this is about half the people answering, half the people answering, slightly more than half. Right, uh, most of the people in the room here have less than uh, 10 employees expected. Uh, you know, with okay, in general, most of the people here have 75 or less employees, or they work with organization. So, there's only like uh, six individuals with 200. Um, wow, a very large percentage of the people who answered uh, was their organization ready for BCP, right. I would say 22 of them, or 1% said they were aware, but never got round to it. Uh, six individuals here, or 14% said they are newbies. Um, only 14% of the people who answered said that they were ready and have ran simulation previously. Okay? That means they were actually ready for this, they ran simulation previously. So, gentlemen, gentlemen, okay? Um, let's start with Henry. Henry, right? Um, Singapore had just announced the circuit breaker right, on the 7th. It started on the 7th of April. For Malaysia, we are nearly close to three weeks in, coming to four weeks already, right? Very, very soon, we are coming to four weeks. As a matter of fact, today, we are going to have an announcement on whether the government or the prime minister will make an announcement on whether the government is extending this for another two more weeks. Both countries have already come up with various stimulus package to ensure that we all are happy, safe, whatever it is, business as usual, when this thing is over. But from the Singapore experience, how has it been for you so far? Hey, Henry? Yeah, uh, Singapore is actually not really in the total lockdown. So we actually, that's what we call it the circuit breaker, right? the uh, essential service. 
are actually still actually continue as per usual. Uh, the school is closed, right? So all other uh, non-essential service itself, the office are closed. You're not allowed to open the office. Uh, the uh, give an example. For example, you are going to the uh, the bubble, right? The the tele the telecommunication, the all those uh, power, water, supermarket. Is actually continue open. Uh, the the you can go to the barber actually to for haircut because that considered essential, right? But you cannot go there and then do your dyeing of the color of your hair to to yellow color or, or red color, which is I always wanted to, but they're not, right? Uh, so uh, this is some of the thing that is different. Uh, people are allowed freely to actually leave the house, but they do not allow uh, encourage you to do gathering or consume the food in the public space. Because I think one of these uh, indicators that recently found out is that uh, when we actually talk and also when we consume food uh, together, right, it's actually the easiest cause of the spread of the uh, infection virus, right. So uh, these are the, some of the measures in place. So office that actually can work from home, I think everybody is connecting to work from home. People that cannot work from home, they're also close if you're not in non essential service. So this is actually the situation in Singapore. So a lot of people life is actually affected. The kids is actually all supposed to actually do the uh, home based learning. So lock into computer. Uh, so it's quite interesting that actually we do one of these uh, trial a week be before which is uh, on the like Tuesday is from the junior college, secondary school on Wednesday and primary school on the Thursday, they do the trial. And then mm -hmm. the subsequent over the weekend, they announced that we go to the uh, go to this uh, home-based learning with, with the circuit breaker activated uh, and the subsequent week, Wednesday, they start all these things. So it's interesting that it's exactly in the framework that what we recommend is to do the test before you actually do the execution. So this is something that actually pretty interesting to watch and see how to do it. How, and uh, of course, we still got some of the teething problem, but I think uh, tend to get uh, settled down pretty soon. Um, the, the teacher and the kids uh, still face some difficulty. For example, how to conduct physical uh, physical uh, training uh, right. over the, the web based right, computer and that, that I think it's still some difficulty, but I think some of the issue was being uh, resolved. Uh, some mm -hmm. unexpected issue because of some of the security system that actually mm -hmm. on, on some of the provider in the web based uh, learning, which is they right. do some of the amendment over the weekend. Yeah, so that's what happened. Yeah. Mm. Right. I think a lot of the Malaysians here are very envious, you know, because I heard that um, Singapore government still allowed us to go for, uh, allow you all to go for haircut. In Malaysia, look at the hair, right? Uh, we, oh, yes. haircuts were not deemed under essential services, so all of us are staying at home with very nice hairstyles. At the <laughs> um, I mean, this is exactly what happened. Uh, when the government of Malaysia actually announced the MCO, we called it movement control order, right? It was not locked down, it's a movement control order. And uh, because it was lax, first week people started going out, people started going to the market, lots of people started going to the market. Um, what happened was we got another two weeks extension because of that. And of course, uh, there were still a lot of cases happening around Malaysia. So, uh, Zora, how has it been for you, you know, over the last listening to what uh, Singapore is having. <laughs> yeah, first I also agree that how I wish we all can get a high card. This is like, oh. <laughs> uh, One moment, I think no haircut. We, have, we will have a new new uh, hair fashion trend in Malaysia by no, in no time. Uh, going back to the 70s, the Boogies era, I guess, uh, having rock and roll. Oh, right, so you were from that you were not me. You were from that you were not me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what have I been doing actually over the last three or actually now 20, day 24 in our whole uh, MCO uh, mm. period? Uh, it's actually quite interesting to a large extent. One is it has also given me opportunity to take a slower pace down. Uh, some of you would know that uh, actually from January to February and uh, up till the MCO, I've been traveling around a bit, uh, running sessions. And this break has given me an opportunity to also take a pause, review and come up with actually new things uh, along the way. I mean, same like what Henry said, this is also part of BCP, how we prepare for eventuality when things normalize in the future. What are some of the changes? So that's uh, some of the things that are coming is, is a positive thing that's happening. Uh, 
it also allows me to learn. Uh, of course, one of the few things to learn and to uh, in this whole current three weeks is really about adapting to new technologies. How do I even uh, step up in terms of the usage? Yes, I've been exposed to Zoom, for example, Blue Jeans, many other platforms that I use before, but uh, there are salient features that we never used before. Uh, now we have to, to even equip ourselves to get to know how to use this, how to figure out new technology. And the other part that I have not really used uh, for a long, long while, although it's already there, I only use, for example, Grab for my rides. I have not used for food. <laughs> use so for food. over the last three weeks, uh, that's uh, that's my new new found uh, a companion. Uh, aside from online delivery, I've managed to discover three or four delivery services who can keep my provision from chicken to beef to vegetable to fruits to my groceries coming in. So uh, it's keeping my business continuity plan in a sense going to make sure that I myself and my family are well protected. Uh, of course, the other part is really about learning what's going to happen or what's happening in our world. I mean, we, let's look at industries. We know the industries are suffering and I really empathize with all uh, out there. It's tough for everybody. It's, the, no one can say they are immune from it. Even big or small, you are part of the economic cycle and we are part of the human society chain. So all of us will invariably be impacted one way or another. So it's tough. And... Uh, the good thing is that we are now, I guess as a society, we are now beginning to appreciate what the government does. We begin to pay more attention to the press release, the press conference from time to time, really knowing what is going on. I think we need to give credit to the frontliners and those who are constantly communicating in this time. Uh, Henry will agree that this is, you cannot run away from communication. Uh, now is the time to over communicate rather than to keep silent. Yeah, uh, uh, and finally, it's around the world. I mean, this is a given opportunity for everyone to stay at home to look and see the world through the eyes of the television, of course. Uh, how different countries are preparing, how companies are reacting to this situation. Not only on the people's side, on the medical, but also look at the economic sense of it. The stimuluses that are coming out. What is that helping? How is that going to impact everybody? I think this has been some of the, the, the exciting things for me over the last three or 24 days now. And I'm pretty sure at four o'clock or five o'clock today, uh, let's brace ourselves for, uh, well, a surprise. Okay, what's your prediction? What, what are you betting on? Are we going to be having another two weeks? Yep. Or not? Yep, money on it. Okay, two weeks. Yeah, I'm putting my money on that also. <laughs> but not, not much money already, but still put money on it. <laughs> Okay, right. So, Henry, uh, uh, let's go back uh, to you as the expert. Okay, can you please tell us what is BCP? And also, I mean, this is for the people who yes. the, uh, the person, people who are not very sure what this is all about. Yes. What BCP and how is it different from DRP? Okay, okay, yeah. So, maybe uh, just go back a little bit on the uh, on the fundamental portion. What is business continuity? Right. Business continuity is actually look at what is the critical function, what is the prioritized activity that in your company. You have to decide what is really critical to you and then decide that actually what kind of capability you need to continue to have during the crisis and also what is the response time that you need to actually uh, react to it. So uh, take, for example, in your organization, even a small SME with less than 10 people in the organization, that some of the business is your bloodstream, is your actually most critical operation to get you uh, the, the good revenue or good profit to survive in the organization operation. You may have many other activity in the company to actually get the uh, value added service, so provide better service to your client. But those is something that you can do without. During the crisis time, during the when the chief resource is being contented, you have to ask yourself, which are those you want to continue and which are those that you can let go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a business continuity portion. Disaster recovery is more towards the IT system. IT system that how you actually support the entire business continuity. So I'm not sure is it a lot of IT personnel in this uh, today this webinar, right? Uh, but the basically in one liner, 
disaster recovery is looking at the computer, the information, how do we recover? So technically in this pandemic outbreak, it will not infect the IT system. The only thing is the IT system demand is actually ramp up. Uh, like what actually Zora mentioned that is you, we may not use to uh, do a lot of those uh, online platform because you are in your comfort zone itself that you don't need to, right? You, it's, it's so easy to get food in, in, in KL and in, in, in many of the places in Malaysia. So why you need to dial it, you can just go there and see the, the, which store is better than you order your food. But at this current situation, you might actually need to explore to it. So the IT demand itself is being ramped up. I think the food delivery and all those service actually being ramped up as well, right? So uh, they, they were faced with a more uh, business challenge itself to deliver their service on top of the IT platform to deliver the service. So that is actually what business continuity is supposed to look at. Yeah. Okay. So, um, let, I mean, I want to ask you a question. In, yes. in your years of experience, mm. has there been any plans ever scale whereby so many things are down at the same time? Because a lot of the business continuity plans that I have had looked at, uh, what has happened is they are very much for my organization. If a HQ goes down, yes. the building goes down, you know, if some electricity goes down. But yes. all these we know will usually be quite okay after a day or two. But in this particular case, we are really having a lockdown. I mean, MCO, right, or circuit breaker for yes. close to a month now, maybe extended to even six weeks more. Yes. So, what is there any, has anyone ever planned for something like this so big? Mm. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, maybe the first thing first is that in planning for business continuity, a few things we always assume, right? So, uh, one of these typical scenario is that you, you can, you have to plan based on the worst case. You cannot plan based on, because uh, a crisis happened, uh, uh, a pandemic outbreak is a worst case that actually outbreak, right? So in the worst case scenario itself, you, you have to assume on two things. One is that, one scenario is that uh, uh, a lot of SME will plan for first scenario, is that early in the morning when you push up your window actually, and you look out in the KL city, you realize is that everybody is business as usual. The only one having crisis is your company. So it's a localized disaster because of fire, because of actually maybe a, a landsliding. Everybody after the, 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 the heavy rain itself, uh, the, it's still business as usual, but your place is actually landslide and covered by, by the mud itself. You cannot continue. So this is a localized disaster. So a lot of the small organization, they will have a business continuity, but it's focused on the localized crisis. Okay. okay, so of course this localized crisis could be as small as only your building that you're assuming or you actually yes. could be the entire village or the right. maybe uh, a, a part of the, the a zone in, in Kuala Lumpur. Right. So this is one of the scenarios. Second scenario, the actually worst case scenario you will plan for is that you open up the window, you push out, you realize that entire city, entire country or entire region itself is in crisis. Okay. So this is this is what not because of this pandemic, but we always actually ask the user which one is a scenario that you would need to plan for in your response respective uh, business. Mm -hmm. So private sector normally will choose the first one, multinational company, and also government sector, emergency service that under the civil servant itself, they will choose the second case. Yeah, because actually, uh, the, the, you can imagine the, the fire brigade itself, actually the worst case scenario is not one fire that happened in one building, but it's actually multiple buildings happen in Kuala Lumpur that they need to deal with the, the fire. So, uh, or actually a kind of nature disaster that need them to activate all their resources to deal with the crisis at the same time. Uh, but coming to the second part of Jeremy's question, right, the, the uh, current scenario in the pandemic outbreak is actually what I call worse than the worst case scenario because it's a global wow. pandemic. Yeah. And the, 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 the only one that close to it that we can use to use as a mirror in the near, in the near history of our, our this uh, is actually SARS that happened in 2003, which is like 17 years ago. Okay, right. So uh, that is a closer, but that incident itself is actually outbreak in some time also in December, although most of the country only recognize it in some time in uh, February. Uh, and it actually ended in sometime May when the weather get hot. 
Okay, so a, a lot of people still hoping that the weather could could actually do some help on it. Uh, the, the, the other thing that's different from the magnitude of it is that the SARS actually impact about 8,000 plus people globally, which is the current situation is different. This COVID-19 already uh, impact close to 1.5 million people. So it's a right. hundred times or a thousand times more in, in this case. So yes. uh, the magnitude of it is different. So and also that uh, what, what it means that because the magnitude is different, this uh, virus and uh, will actually uh, with us for longer duration. That is something that she yet to yet to actually uh, see from from the development of the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Now, because I I because um sometime last year I was I was reading an article and in the article I mean uh, this is me and my fascination with zombie yeah. I actually read in the article that the um the American government had a simulation on what if there was a zombie apocalypse. apocalypse you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Very very. I was saying, wow, why yeah? Why you even bother with such a simulation? But then when further I read the article, I started understanding it's not so much that there will be a zombie apocalypse, because I don't think any of us are going to turn to zombie. But the thing was, the whole thing about thinking about what if such a big scenario happened and we were trapped, okay? To me, it was very simple. The last few weeks have been, yep, it seems as though there's a zombie apocalypse. We cannot go out. We're all trapped in our home, right? The, good, the only good thing is all of us are not turning to zombie yet, okay? So, Zora. What is your take on it? Because I know you have done quite a fair bit of work with banks and uh, other financial uh, insurance company on BCP. So, what is your take on this? Okay, so so um, thanks to Henry for for already laying the groundwork in terms of how the different phases, how the different scenarios are when we look at business continuity planning. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that have to go behind it. One, of course, as we all know, in any management leadership program, a plan remains a plan. Until you test it and until you execute, <laughs> then, if you, then you realize that, oh, okay, it works. Oh, okay, okay, it didn't work. All right. Mm -hmm. so, so in terms of how well, to, to, to me, whether any organization, be it a multinational or even a global player that has got multitudes of location worldwide and depends mm -hmm. on a whole variety and range of supply chain, uh, is there anyone who really got all this together? Chances are no. And, and from the years, even when I was practicing, even as far-fetched as we try to think with all the assumptions that we put in place, no one would have come to this kind of scenario. I don't think we would ever come to this. And, 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 and what has triggered the further development, I guess, over the years is true learning from the past. SARS, as Henry mentioned, is one lesson in the history of mankind that we use as a scenario if you talk of pandemic how do we even to use that learning to start planning ahead then come h1n1 that is on 20 well h1n1 h1n5 in 2011 and and for those who are out here in on this call if you're in the financial industry you will also realize that in 2011 bank nagara malaysia came out with an entire pandemic guideline that mirrors the World Health Organization's uh, guidelines. In the WHO guidelines, they were actually uh, structure given in terms of how you structure and how you declare even from a code green, if you are using a code green um, legend, to a code red. They go through six phases of escalation. So we already have guidelines in place of how to deal with such things. The question, of course, is how many of us actually took notice, how many of us actually pay a lot of attention to go back into that basic document that we had already, right? uh, coming to nine years now, to put it into a plan, to simulate it further. Uh, and, and, and that's on the pandemic. If you talk about on the non-pandemic side, uh, in my experience, one of the, the most recent, I won't say it's a, it's a, about a good eight years now, how many of you can remember the Bangkok flood? The Thailand flood. Now, mm. everybody has just took for granted, uh, flood is, you know, the flood happens up there in, in the north of Thailand, north of Bangkok. It's not going to impact me. We should all go on business as usual. Then voila, see what happened. Ask the automobile industry. Ask all this logistics company. How much part dependent they were on certain parts. 
those of you who are waiting for your Honda cars or Toyota cars, sorry, you did, you had to wait for about four or five months and the model upgrading also took a year later to be introduced. So these are the impact that we need to, to be aware. We are no longer living as uh, on an island on our own uh, or we shouldn't be a Qatar di bottom and put on for Malaysians. We need to be aware, we need to take cognizance about what is happening. We need to start looking at the entire big picture. Who are we dependent on? Who in the organization are the key persons or department that needs to be mobilized? There are a lot of essential functions and services that needs to run. There are also a lot of non-essential services that can take a back seat at this present moment. But they also have a role to play. I'm sure we will cover that later on. We will definitely cover that later because already off my head, I'm already thinking of this. Okay, um, you know, Gaurav, you come from the financial industry, uh, uh, financial industry. Um, I come from an SME. You know, to even have a spare person looking to BCP is already a big deal, right? This is definitely something that we'll ask later on. You know, how do you want us to look into this kind of things when we are on, every day in operational mode? Okay, but that. I'll leave it to later. But my key question now, back to Henry, just to, just for us to have a fuller spectrum of what this is about. Henry, what are some of the good practices of any company to ensure that we have even what I call a decent BCB plan in place? Okay, okay. let's start with manufacturing or service. I'm not up to you which one will, but at least give us some factors that if I'm in manufacturing, this is what I need to look at. If I'm in services, this is what I need to look at. Okay, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe the first thing that what I look at is the uh, not not on the industry first, right? So to okay. have a proper or uh, actually uh, effective business continuity, we do not encourage company to plan based on the cost of disaster. So what I mean by cost of disaster is that you don't need to plan for fire, flooding, and and all all different this scenario because there's too many of them. And there's, if you plan for thousand one and one, the thousand and two will happen. Yeah, so uh, what we normally do is in business continuity is that we plan for the impact. So what do you mean by the impact, right? So it could be that in the case of crisis, right, uh, the, your loss of manpower, maybe the crisis that triggering it is actually uh, uh, terrorism, maybe actually uh, because of this, uh, maybe because of this uh, on, on strike or whatever reason or political unrest, right? But end of the day is that, do you actually lose your facility? Do you lose your people? Do you lose your data, right? Or do you lose your supply chain? So these are the impact that you will feel it from the business side of it. So in, if you like this as a typical example, I think, I think uh, we all know that in the lockdown, right? We 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 do plan for pandemic, but I think uh, the magnitude of it, most of us actually based on is that the scale of the SARS itself. Right, not actually on the lockdown in in the case of this COVID nineteen. So uh, the skill, the magnitude of it will be smaller. So that is one uh, one thing. But at least you have a plan that how you could get through on the pandemic outbreak. The second thing is that we in the terrorism itself. At one stage, we were all very worried, and we need to plan for lockdown. Because lockdown in the case that let's say actually a terrorist attack uh, a, a, a CBD area, I don't want to use any city, right? Yeah. So any of the CBD area, and then you you know the terrorist is down there, just like actually what happened in Mumbai incident, you're unlikely to ask your staff to evacuate. So most likely is that you are locked down in your company. So we do practice the impact of a, a lockdown in the organization. How do you continue in the operation? which in this case, we end up using it for the pandemic. So what, what the, the really, uh, the gist or the most important thing that we, if I could uh, give you one main takeaway is, is that plan for the impact of the business. And then in this case, regardless what the situation that happened, you could be actually flexible to apply your plan and then able to continue your critical and your prioritized activity. Okay. Right. Yeah. So this is what we normally do in business continuity. Plan for uh, the impact. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Plan for the impact. And some people call it impact, and some people call it impact or the consequences, which is because the 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 the, the wording and the language itself is some mm. easier to understand in the consequences rather than impact. Uh, so on the mm. second part, the Jeremy, your question is that, uh, in in the what's the good practice in some of the industry like manufacturing or in the service sector, right? Yeah. Uh, manufacturing sector is uh. 
very difficult for the recovery in the current situation because actually uh, the number one thing that we try to achieve is to reduce face-to-face -face contact so that the virus and all those things will not actually uh, the spread, right? So mm -hmm. minimize the face-to-face -face contact. But most of the manufacturing, you need to come together, right? Not like actually the consultancy work that actually you, all of us could actually go back home and then do your own report and then come together virtually meet, right? Uh, manufacturing, you cannot produce your goods actually at home, right? So they still need to do it. So a few of the suggestions that what the manufacturing, I think some of them that actually, if, uh, because the shutdown in Mauritius is actually quite a uh, uh, short time on the responding, uh, yeah. you will definitely will use, need to use this strategy when you come to reactivate or actually when you come back to uh, after the MCO or the uh, big leave, right? So number one, you have to consider that how do you do uh, split team? Split team in the way that I may have uh, two different team of the people that actually doing different timing or different location. Like split team, huh? like either some of us that like doing shift work is a split team, right? And then you can, uh, the second thing you can consider is that you do zoning. You zone your area into multiple location. So uh, depends on the size and the, and, the, and the number of staff you have. You zone it to multiple location. So allow them to actually do work in the separate location and do not cross them. So in this case, in a way, you're restricting their movement in the specific area. So in case, one group of them is infected, it will not spread it to the other group. Wow. Okay, yeah. So the key thing down here is that you must actually plan for the another outbreak, right? Uh, I'm not going to speculate, right? Because I my job is to do business continuity. I'm not fortune teller. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not politician either. So I'm not going to speculate will they actually extend the MCO or not. But as a business continuity, planner, we have to plan. Number one possibility is that they leave it. You're going to start work on, on after the after the uh, after 14th of, of April. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what is the plan you're going to do? Right? And do you believe that actually after that you will have no incident, no case? If once they leave it, there's no other case outbreak. If there's a case that outbreak in your location, how are you going to deal with it? That is actually the time that really challenging your business continuity. Yeah, so, uh, and manufacturing, that's why I say, actually is very taxing, right? Very difficult because you need the people to come together. Yeah, okay. uh, then the, the second situation is, of course, possible is that they extend it further, right? And then you need to deal with how do you continue in this operation itself, when, yeah. if they're going to continue on that. I do know that in Malaysia, there's actually some of the factory and some of them operation, they actually able to continue run certain operation with, uh, with some of the tighter restriction and control, which is possible. So uh, you probably have to work with authority if the second situation happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Service sector, service sector, in the case of service sector that actually happened on this, I think uh, if you are possible to work from home, I would really recommend that you at least to break to two, to more than at least two teams, right? So you can have two or three teams will be even better. And let the, your team of people either work from home or work from the office. In case an outbreak that happened in your organization, it will not be all the eight in one basket. Yeah, uh, and uh, and I do know that actually the service sector sometimes that you need a lot of face to face contact, but as the current current situation, you you have to rank the risk that either you have been locked down because of an outbreak in your office, uh, again locked down again because of the outbreak, or you want to take the risk of the inconvenient. Yeah, so uh, so so that is something that actually in the business continuity that we need to really look at actively. Because even the MCO is lift, there's still cases that actually happen, uh, yes. like what actually now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so this will continue, and you really have to plan for an outbreak that might impact your business. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of uh, learning on that from uh, impact to uh, no, plan for the impact. Okay, so don't plan for the disaster, plan for how it impacts the whole entire supply chain or your organization. Uh, to look at splitting the team, look at zoning the team. And one of the things that we are doing, I mean, it's slightly different. In essence, what happened is we have always had a small trading business, but because of this particular uh, crisis and we feel that there got to be a significant effect on our training and consulting business, half my team is actually doing trading of medical equipment and also um, 
things like face masks, things like uh, body suits, you know, all these. Uh, even selling uh, what we call melt brown, uh, melt, let's say melt blow to people, okay? So uh, to companies. And what we have seen is um, from last week to this week, um, even for simple things, uh, like, you know, melt blown, what they do is, uh, it's actually the middle layer for all our face masks, very critical component. The prices of that had gone up significantly. I'm talking 40 to 50% of what it was two weeks ago. We've seen that price go up. So it's crazy what's happening out there. So even for businesses, as you mentioned, Henry, um, if I'm in manufacturing, I want to start work when we start work. Lifted also maybe cannot. Why? Because I don't have any raw mat to do anything. Okay. Exactly. Yes. I know you, uh, as you mentioned, you're from the financial industry. So can you please tell us what are some of the things you have seen our government, Bank Nagara, or you know, whoever body have pushed out there to ensure that there is a continuity of some sort? Okay, so um, thanks. So, so maybe I will just also put back to, to, to the context as a big picture first. Based on my learning and experience, uh, for me, I sum up in seven broad categories in terms of best practices that any organization needs to have. First is regarding governance. Uh, the governance that you have within the organization, things like do you have a policy, do you even like what Henry said, you start with a business impact analysis. I use a BIA terminology uh, for the consequences. Uh, do you have a terms of reference for a committee? You cannot leave it to someone by chance that you are now the, B the B CP coordinator or BCM coordinator. No, you need to have a proper terms of reference. You need to have a committee that really religiously and with the auditors together uh, be on top of things. So that's something on the governance side that you, we, we need to, to have, one. Second is the structure. What is the structure that you need to start thinking of? You don't have one now. Uh, is it the same senior management team if becoming your crisis management team, for example? It may not be. Uh, we know there are different qualities and different uh, requirements for one to be in a situation that can handle stress uh, should a code rate situation like this happen. You may want to think of that. You may also want to think of a business uh, continuing management secretary at the BCC that will support the crisis management team to make decisions. Uh, that's the second part. Uh, third will be in the escalation. Do you have an escalation plan in place? There must be an escalation procedure. Uh, Escalation meaning if there's, a, for example, a, a, a fire that's burning in one corner of the room, uh, the first escalation, of course, is the first, you just use a fire extinguisher to extinguish. But what if it prolongs? What is the process involved for one to take it up and escalate up to the crisis management team or the recovery director, for instance, to call the shot, what will be the next? This is very technical, I know, in terms of business continuity, but these are structures that, for me, these are best practices to share. The fourth area is regarding plan. So once you have all that, you need to start planning out. You need to draw the plans. You need to then do a dry run or some actually do a little bit of combination of a simulation with some physical test around it. After that, you then go into the fifth step. Once you come up from the test, review it, what worked, what didn't work, what can you improve, update accordingly. Don't keep it aside for don't know how many years until, we, until you scramble for it. Make it accessible. Uh, uh, so those are the, the, the fifth step that you need to do. And the second last is really about communication. You cannot run away. Your best practice needs to evolve around communication. One, from a company's perspective, who is your press media relations officer? You need to establish that from the onset. You need to give enough training for that person. You need to have all your templates or all the other communication plan ready. Don't think of it at the moment to craft. Uh, you know who are your PR agency, who are the newspaper, news agency, how do you get it to your customers, how do you get to your employees. These are all important measures. I mean, during a crisis, communication is one form of comforting and assurance to your customers as well as your employees. We cannot run away from that. And finally, finally, uh, well, <laughs> I think uh, it's really about still as what Henry say, it's the other part. Don't just plan all the way until how you manage, but it's about how you then go back to normal. It's the normalization phase. Is it at abrupt or is it a phase out normalization? So the cycle has not completed. This is a full cycle of a business continuity planning. So that, that all start with that. And for the service industry, and, and as I said earlier on, 
we are thankful in the financial yeah, Bob, industry. You don't mind, uh, can you just go through the seven again very quickly? We have governance. Governance, uh, structure. Mm -hmm. We have escalation. Mm -hmm. We have plan and testing. Mm -hmm. We have fifth is review and updating. Mm -hmm. The sixth is communication. And yeah. seven is normalization. Mm. Right, and as you were saying, uh, for the uh, service and also manufacturing. Okay, for, so for a service, uh, okay, service as what Henry has pointed service industry is probably uh, slightly better off compared to manufacturing because we are able to provide services uh, offline or not fully dependent on your machines and processes to get things and output for your, your solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the service industry, if I look at the financial, the bank, the, the banking and, industry and insurance, we are fortunate in that sense in Malaysia. Bank Negara has constantly issued uh, guidelines and the governance in terms of compliance, risk management is very strong. Uh, so we are very fortunate that you have that. Uh, and, and, and if you can see over this period of time, even the authorities are using some of the guidelines to make sure that things work. Uh, we, are, we are fortunate that the government didn't go on a full lockdown or a full curfew. They also look in the way, to me, I, I take it, they also look at the, when you say about essential services, it's likened to in the corporate sector, what are the key essential services or business function that need to operate. So at least they allowed the, the, the medical field, which is, for example, key important, the security, the food. Otherwise, there'll be a chaos. Everybody will be fighting for one another. I mean, that's our basic needs. If you don't have food on the table, uh, chaos will happen. So I, I see this as uh, the, the, the analogy of how the service industry is still able to continue. And the very fact, as you said, like, for example, training and, and advisors, consultants like this, uh, this form of, of, of approach still makes it work. Uh, you ask Henry, ask myself, can we, go, can we guide someone through a, a current plan even though I'm not in your office? Yes, we have the technology now. We have the technology to go through. So there is still an output related uh, uh, end in mind for service industry, even though through this period of time. But the, the, the thing is, I, I mean, there's a lot of things. Both of you have said a lot of things. And my quick question is, is okay, hold on. Before I ask that question, I just want to make sure uh, of a few things. Uh, everyone, right, uh, I'm just going to call out your name if you do not mind, huh? because I want everyone to have their full name. I've got an individual with a Japanese uh, name in here. Can you please identify yourself, rename yourself? I've got people called SCSL. Can you please rename it so that at least you know who is it? Uh, I got iPhone one, I got two iPhones, just iPhone only. Can you please rename yourself? And of course, uh, uh, Naughty Wolf, can you please rename yourself? Huh? Okay, right. So that would be great. Uh, please rename yourself so that we know who you are. Now, also in the room, we've got quite a few individuals here. I mean, I recognize the name. I'm not sure this, this is who they are. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, please ask questions later on. And I know uh, if this is Professor Krishna Murthy, he's also in the room. Professor Krishna Murthy actually wrote a book on the whole entire. Um, well, remember our MH that went down? Well, he wrote the whole book on it. Okay. So uh, you may want to ask him, uh, you may want to ask some questions later on. And then notice some of our clients are here as well, right, from small and big companies. So please feel free to ask questions. Huh? If you want to ask questions, put it in the chat. Or else later, I will allow you to ask questions provided you raise your hands. Okay? Even if you have a question now that you want to ask, you can also raise your hand and I'll come to you in a moment. All you need to do is highlight in the participant area. You go to click the participant button. You will see there's a list of participants down there. You can change your name there, number one. Second thing you can do is you can either say yes, no, or raise your hand, and then I'll come to you and allow you to ask a question. Okay? We will, uh, this is one of the security that we are doing. We are not allowing everyone to unmute themselves. Only the co-host will be able to unmute you, right? Myself included. Now, um, very quick one. Both of you mentioned a lot of things on that. Okay, Henry, I am only a small SME. Less than a hundred people. How oh, like that? So many things to do. So what is your recommendation to organizations like us whereby we are small, we are not big, you know? And this is, as so for some business owners will say, like, it is a very, it seems like a very costly exercise in a plan that may or may not happen. 
So therefore, they keep it at the back of their mind, and when it happens, we will handle it all. So yes. how, how, what's your response to that? Yes, uh, yeah, correct, yes. This is, uh, in fact, it's the, the cost is always one of the problem because um, money is always a problem. Uh, yeah, the, uh, but I, I used to say this, that if you actually have a million dollars, right, you can do a million dollars business continuity program. But if you only have a thousand dollars, Right, or a thousand ringgit, you can do a thousand ringgit actually uh, business continuity program as well. Right? And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a rocket sign that you uh, need to commit uh, at the end of the day, uh, it, it, uh, but it's more like you need to actually commit the time and the resources and the people thinking manpower to, to work on it. Right? Uh, we, uh, two, two of the example I would like to share. One is that in, with one of the telecom company, one of the telco company in Malaysia, we work mm -hmm. out with them, they're actually on the BCM program, and they take them almost like 10 years to plan for the entire infrastructure and all those redundancy. And we can all appreciate that in telecom industry, the infrastructure and all those things is going to be very expensive, costly. Yeah, and uh, but over the 10 years itself, they can actually look at some of the equipment that you, they need to purchase earlier, some of the equipment that when they actually, they're going to uh, stand down, but then uh, it will be make, make sense to use as a backup in other location, just by swapping certain equipment that go faster or actually uh, retire it later, right? So that actually will make a lot of sense that you can imagine that when you go to 4G, right, some area that go to 4G, the backup of the, uh, the 3G or the 2G equipment is there, could be used for another backup and the other location. So in this case, over the 10 year itself, they achieve a, a very good business continuity program. So the important thing is that you must take the baby step. Baby step that actually, once you, the baby start to learn the first step, who know that which baby when they have the first baby step, eventually they can run the Olympics or they can run the marathon, right? Yeah, so nobody at that time will think about it, but without the baby step, the first step itself, confirm they will not be able to walk or even run later on. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, who, mm. who, who are the good people to select? I mean, uh, okay, I have a small organization. Let's just say, okay, I, I go for the person who's in charge of OSHA, for example. Is that a good person to select? Because, you know, the OSHA precaution thinking, is, is it a, what, more or less the same as BCP? And the other thing is, how involved should top management be with the whole entire process? Yes, ah, yes. So this is exactly the second case that I'm saying that. Uh, okay. So in the case that you actually have a very tight budget itself, right? The mm. other organizations have very tight budget. What they do is that they actually just send the senior management itself to attend one of the one training itself to to know the leadership itself. What the business continuity people need to actually involve as a senior manager. Right, mm -hmm. uh, the training program, like what actually uh, Zorat mentioned just now, is that I need to provide the leadership as a CEO. So I need to know in the case of crisis, which are those things that I need to decide. I need to know actually what is the prioritized activity because end of the day, I'm the business owner. I have to make that decision. So I need to make this decision. But the detail of writing the procedure, the SOP and those things, then the, 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 the project manager or the BCM manager that appoint to it can then start work on, on the detail. Yeah, but without the, the management decision itself, the project manager will be like actually chasing their own tail, keep running there. Everybody seems like actually it's important. Everybody said that they want this thing, but, but they, they couldn't make a decision. Yeah, so uh, just, just uh, to, to share on this thing is that the smaller company that we plan for business continuity is actually less than 10 people. But the owner itself see that in the case but actually they have a crisis. The entire business is going to wrap up. They have been spending like 20 years in the business, in that industry, although it's a small organization. But if a crisis, they will actually just wrap up the entire business that they built over the two or three generations. So they built a business continuity program. And I don't think the budget itself is really that big because it's basically send some people for the training. And then uh, and, and now it's even better. A lot of the course and those things online and the web-based, right? Uh, and uh, from there, they learn the, 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 the gist of it and then they do the discussion and we help them to do certain review and, and, and then they do certain implementation. Yeah, oh, so, okay. so since, since you're asking, time is- hey, where do we go? 
Yes. As we go, I mean, you you said there was some mm-hmm. online stuff. Uh, I'm quite sure you you're yes. it. Yes. Just yes. to give you some uh, marketing points down here. <laughs> oh, where do we go? Is there a website we yes. can go? Yes, uh, you 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 can check on my on my on my website bcpasia.com right uh, mm-hmm. on on this right yeah uh, not especially at this case I don't want to be seen as actually like trying to leverage on the uh, uh this crisis of pandemic that actually to to do marketing but mm-hmm. a few things that actually just uh just actually echo a few of the point that what we mentioned number one thing is that you need to consider the leadership. Right, the, as a senior management, as a business owner, what is your decision? Right, no decision is a bad decision. You can make a a a, a midway decision. You can make a overreact decision, but and then adjust it later on is fine. Yeah, but no decision is bad. So leadership, and then second thing is that chatting Zora also mentioned that is that do the business impact to decide what is critical function, what is your impact in the business, and then subsequently once you write the plan itself. You can do the testing and the exercise, yeah. And it's always worthwhile to get a, a second pair or the third pair of the eye to review and audit your plan because we all know that if you're writing an article, right, it's very easily you make some very simple and very uh, obvious mistake, but somehow you just don't see it. But another person will able straight away tell you, say, why you didn't think about this? Huh? Yeah. So so uh uh second pair of eye or the third uh third party view reviewing will be very helpful in that. Yeah. So and all these are achieved with some of those costs itself that are actually available, and uh mm-hmm. we do it even the web base itself, right? Yeah. And uh okay. I'm not so the I'm not so sure at this moment because HRDF is actually most of the cost is actually a physical training. So when the MCO is leave, I, we, are, we are happy to, to do that. But at this moment, I'm not sure that the web base is it subsidized, but web based cost normally not as expensive. So right. uh, uh, just, just to answer that, HRDF has come up with some guidelines for web base. Uh, mm-hmm. We have amended it one week after they come out, uh, revise it. Uh, the points are there, right? but it's still a little bit of questions here and there. But I'm quite sure uh, they will be coming up with something more concrete. Um, let's go, to Zora. You don't mind, eh? okay? Since you have been doing BCP for a little while and you have experience in it, what are some? Of, no, I'm just taking a question you asked in the comment, okay? Yeah. I'm not sure who asked it because the name is not there. Right? Um, the question was initially directed at Henry, but I'm going to give you, uh, Zora, a chance to ask this, answer this question. What are some of the BCP we can prepare as a family? Come again, sorry. What are some what of the that? BCP for family? Because yes, we have talked about for organization, for company, large and small, but for family, yeah. <laughs> so, no, is there any BCP for family? Oh, of course. Of course. Okay, okay, so, okay, so for those of you who... Perspective on that. <laughs> So for those of you who joined the call much earlier, actually over the last three weeks, I have in, the, in some way put in place some of the, my own family BCP. And I'll tell you how it works, right? So if we talk about family, let's start with a few things. Um, one is the, we have to look into the well-being and welfare of everyone in the family. Uh, so, I, well, well, so I'm already out from the insurance industry, but I want to say one of the, one of the BCP is actually having insurance. Uh, whether you have medical insurance, you whether you have insurance for the home, uh, actually now, like it or not, the risk is actually escalating. Yeah, we, we know, yeah, no crime. But actually the exposure to fire may be higher because everybody now becoming a master chef at home. You never know this kind of master chef, what will happen to the, the, the kitchen, right? And it can be a nighttime uh, explosion, a gas tank, and you may be in fire. And, and this is the last, time, last thing that you want that you have to fork out money on your own to even repair a house, let alone getting a contractor to come in at this moment. Uh, so, so that's one form of, of BCP. Uh, the other mm-hmm. BCP is really about food. How do you start planning? Yeah, we, let's not be the ones who go and panic buy and hoard everything into your living room, your pantry, your bedroom, etc. Full of toilet rolls, for example, that the whole world has gone into. Um, how do you plan? What do you need? Start like for me, online purchase, the slots don't open up instantly. The slots open up periodically. So we know what do we need? What are the essentials that I need to survive? What is it that we eat? What is it that we don't like to eat? What is it that we can, okay lah, don't, don't have to eat now. We can forego this kind of luxury for a while. Thirdly, uh, equipments. 
uh, are we is a Wi-Fi? <laughs> you know, like for example, am I paying the the, the bill so that the, the these services remain connected? Uh, yeah. Cars, am I also occasionally starting the running the engine? Although we are not supposed to go out, as simple as that in terms of family. Uh, am I keeping myself healthy? Yes, it's also a form of BCP. How do you make yourself healthy? Uh, there are a lot of home exercise that you can do. You don't have to go jogging out there. The world champion, for example, Nicole David can do everything indoor. 15 minutes workout. Why can't we? Uh, I do running on a sport, for example, uh, every alternate day, so 20 uh, minutes. I, I believe by the time we get out of MCO, I should be fitter than before. Uh, so that's one of the, uh, one of the things that the, the benefit from this. And finally, if I look at if those who are already going a lot to go on travels, holidays, Actually, a lot of family forget. There is also a, a, a BCP that you have in place. Uh, besides just buying insurance, do you load everybody into one plane? Uh, we have learned uh, since the professor on, on the call, we know from NH370, there are a lot of learnings from there as well. Uh, and hence, a lot of organization and also family can, can, can start thinking about that. Do we travel as a whole big family? Do you have a wheel in place? I know it's a taboo, but really, do you have a wheel in place? And, and there's so many more things that we can think of that I know I cannot cover. And a simple thing as the other one is the last thing. Do you even have your own uh, fire evacuation plan for your family? Do you know or does the family know where is your assembly point in case of a fire to the house? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Henry, I'm just also coming back to one of the questions that was asked right, uh, from the participants in the chat. Uh, going back to what you were referring to in terms of splitting the team, rotating the team, right? Uh, the, the question here, does that mean that the non-working half doesn't do anything or they are doing different things? Yes. Clarify that a little bit. Mm, yes, correct. Yeah. So the... Uh, Let's say actually uh, we talk about the first one, actually the split team. Huh? Yeah, split team. So you can split team in a different way. One is about different location. So if you possible to like the manufacturing sector, we talk about our service sector. If you can have two different locations, you split them to two different operations. If you cannot in your existing premises, zone it to two different zones, zone A and zone B. So uh, I just give give you let you have a better uh, imagination because I can't draw a picture down here right so imagine that actually in the university uh, that we all been to before right uh, the engineering faculty will go to the canteen of canteen A and then the business will only go to canteen B so you zone them out but in the normal day they are freely to move around in the entire campus so now you zone them they only can do certain resources in certain locations yeah so in this case right uh, they they will probably will be uh, have to do certain part of the work and then pass this work to the other party. So, uh, yeah, you can zone it by timing as well. So, normal day, let's say you are actually not a 24-hour operation, you actually start work at 9 to 5 o'clock, right? Now, you actually probably want to tell them, say, now we're going to start the operation at 6 a.m. in the morning and you actually finish work at 3 o'clock. The other group of people that come in actually at 3.30 and then they work until like 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. In the, in the night. So, you're actually using timing to be a zone itself. In between the cleaning and then handover, make sure that decentralization, deep in cleaning is very important to prevent that actually cross infection. Yeah. So so this is are those situations that possible to actually still doing it. You may used to be work eight hour a day, now you only work seven hour a day. So that actually spread in the operation. Productivity may be lower, but in the case that in this case, actually a lot of companies realize that the staff willing to put in more and pro help to produce more, right? Uh, like actually many of the our clients when we talk to the staff actually really put in more uh, motivation is high and then they actually uh, produce more than usual. And I see company that in the manufacturing food industry ramp up the production more than 30% as per normal day. The second, yeah. Yeah. Mm. the second situation is that if some of the business do not have two locations, they have to let some of the team work from home. So in this right. case, they have to take turns, right? This week I work in the office and, and you work in the home, right? So work from home, some of them, were, the productivity may be affected. So you have to actually schedule your work. Is that what you think you have to do at home? And then what I think that you can do in the office. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, in this case, then you will actually have a better balance, right? Yeah, bear in mind, okay. it's business continuity. 
if your company do not continue, you don't have a job, and then we don't have a business to talk about. Yeah. So uh, and and the 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 employee itself, end of the day, will lose a job, and then the the, the that is a lose lose situation. Yeah. Uh, no. No. I mean, I, so something that very valid that you brought up, and I remember this when uh, when SARS was happening. Uh, I was in a uh, very big beast, uh, business process yes. outsourcing organization serving regional clients. I remember one of the things that we did was we actually had our KL, uh, half the team was in KL, the other half of the team actually had to move all the way down to Cyber Jaya. Yes. We had to, had to work in two separate teams. But what I remember from that situation was we forgot one thing. We forgot that just because we split the people, it doesn't mean that these people don't stay together. Because you know we have a lot of people who may be you know, renting places, staying together because they may not be from uh, from KL, so they move to KL, so they work together, stay together. And some of these people were going back to the same house, okay, or the same apartment, even though one team was in KL and the other team was in um, Jaya. And it made us realize very quickly that you know we had to really look at the whole entire process again. That was one key learning that I remember. But the key thing here, I know, uh, and I'm going to go back to some of these questions here. Now, uh, what you mentioned just now, I think that would be a very good application once even the MCO is lifted, because we just do not know whether anyone is a carrier for at least a few days after that, okay, or maybe a two weeks after that. It may be something you want to do, because what we do not want is everyone to go back to the office just because MCO is lifted. Right? And then, before we know it, someone happened to be an infected person showing no symptoms and suddenly half the office is again on lockdown. Okay? And you, you remember uh, what's happening in Malaysia, some of the places that are really in lockdown, the army has put barbed wires around the whole entire apartment. Why? Just to prevent those individuals from leaving. That's something that we don't want. Huh? Now, um, so, uh, back to Zora. Zora, you mentioned the seven points. And... Uh, Right, uh, Shasmin, right? Shasmin, a very old friend of mine, right? Uh, what he mentioned is this. Shasmin asked the question, okay? Well, a lot of things down here. For an SME now, what should I be focusing on? <laughs> There's a lot to focus on, right? So it's already happened. So sh what should I be focusing on? Zora, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry, I just unmute because there were noise coming coming okay. out uh, yes. from my neighbor. Okay, okay. Uh, so so taking on this question, so can I assume that there is no BCP in place? I think you can. Okay, so if you don't have a BCP in place, um, it's not all doom and gloom. There are help outside your own organization, outside yourself. Uh, there are already a few people here on the call, for example, that you can reach out to for help already. Uh, taking first baby steps, as what Henry said, we have to start small. If you don't have, take one hour of your current time away and put down a blank piece of paper. Start looking at where what is going to ensure that uh, my business survives. Put that out first as the end in mind. Then you work backwards. What are the components that's going to make it work? When you start doing that, you'll be able to see, hey, this area, I need this person. I need this supplier, for example. Then you go to the next question. From there, what, how do I now put in place something that to ensure that it's still operating even at this current moment? Uh, so for me, that is the one basic thing that you can do first. This is the really, really fighting fire now. Is the fire is in front of you, extinguish it as best as possible. Now is not the time to come and start thinking of different scenarios and how do I prepare for the next plan. Put that aside. Uh, that's for me, is put that aside. Now it's really about fighting fire. Look at what is your end game in mind. Trace back the steps that get to the output. Based on each step, who are the stakeholders? Who are dependent on each stakeholder to make things work and see what do you have in place. Do you have an alternate supplier, for example? Do you have another alternate workforce that can help you out uh, in this situation? Do you have access to another, like what Henry was saying, another third, part, another third party pair of eyes, second party pair of eyes that can help you or even someone just to talk to in this instance? 
uh, SME Association, you have a network of a lot of uh, business owners. I'm sure this is a time that everybody will come together to just talk. Uh, nothing wrong about talking. If you don't have an answer, it's fine. Just talk it out. Speak it out. Somebody in the room may be able to help you out as well. So that, that would be what I see as the most practical thing that we can do now uh, before everything comes back to normalcy, which as you and I know, we will never have a crystal ball as to when that will be a full 100% uh, normalcy in our life. That, that, okay, the, uh, I just received a uh, WhatsApp thing that the uh, Prime Minister will be announcing at 4 p.m. today whether yeah. we will be having an extension, right? Mm -hmm. if, uh, like it or not, otherwise, whether we, I lose this bet or I win this bet, right? I'd like to treat the both of you to lunch sometime or dinner sometime whenever both of you are in town. Okay. Virtual lunch, right? Henry, I know you come down once in a while, right? Um, now, Henry. What are the plans? I mean, Zorb has started a little bit on this, but what are the plans for normalcy? Okay, because I think once this is over, everyone wants to go back to something deemed normal. But because for Malaysians, the lockdown has been so long, there is actually a lot of new normal now. Okay, and in fact, uh, my partners and myself were having a big discussion yesterday. Uh, and we were even asking the question, you know, after working on this for like three weeks, now, do we really need an officer? So that was even a question that we were asking ourselves because we wasn't so used to just working from home and, you know, as Ken, one of my partner mentioned, you know, it's so nice to be able to work from home and every hour just go and say hi to the kids, you know. It seems good, it seems that we can do something to pick up. So how do we get back to what we call a new normal? So what are the processes, procedures in place in BCT that can be implemented to get back to that new normal as quickly as possible? Yeah, uh, so, yeah. so we... I think uh, regardless, uh, regardless what is the announcement at 4 p.m. actually today by the Prime Minister, uh, the uh, we, we have to recognize a few things down here. Number one, after this COVID-19 itself, the world will be different. Uh, for, for one very big thing is that like what Jeremy mentioned, your boss, your wife, your kids, right, and your partner will start to ask you that why we actually used to do it the, the previous model that your business operate and during the, the COVID-19 or pandemic outbreak that time, we, we, uh, how much is the difference? Cost and effectiveness versus comfort and also versus actually the, the, uh, the uh, output itself at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. I think uh, while we all of us thinking that going back to the normal, I think the the, the the after the pandemic that actually outbreak right even the even uh because when the mco is leave doesn't mean the pandemic is over it's just actually mm -hmm. mco is leave right you will still still see that actually a lot of cases that actually happen you have to be prepared right which is very difficult i think a lot of us human being not only singaporean or malaysian uh nothing to do with that but it's human being all of us always will actually think that we might have a luck down here so, but you have to prepare in the business continuity an uh, incident that outbreak in your office, like what actually Jeremy mentioned just now, uh, outbreak down there, end up the G corner of the area, the part wire, the whole place, you cannot go in, cannot go out, in your neighborhood area or in your office. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so that is actually one of the things that actually really risky that we, uh, when the MCO is leave, multiple cases still happening. Right? and you have to plan for. So that is become one of the worst case you have to plan for after MCO is leave. Right? Uh, and if you think that actually I won't be so unlucky, right? And my luck is, is actually always is quite good, then it's not a business continuity. Right? You have to plan based on the worst case. And then uh, if if you cannot take the risk that everybody being locked out, then why actually even the MCO is leave, you try to go back to more normal life that people can go out. But do you want all the staff to come back to office? Do you want, Jeremy, do you want to see Ken to, uh, in the same office and have a lunch with him then end up actually both of you being locked up at the same time? You say, I cannot take the risk for this case. So then- I'm not Ken then, for 20 years, don't need, don't need. Yeah, so, so you say that let, let's do this lunch or yeah, this, yeah. this drink <laughs> later on, right? Yeah, or we probably can have the virtual drinks <laughs> and those things now and then, yeah. So, so, so this is the risk versus what actually you will be executing it where I really like actually to catch up together with, with all of you to have, to have a drinks and have a, have a lunch together, right? But at the same time, the risk versus actually the reality. 
Mm. Yeah. So, uh, and I see a few of the place being locked out, and then when they release it, especially in China, they mm. actually will have this revenging actually on uh, on 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 the action itself. Right. You being locked up for fourteen day, locked up for thirty day. Right. Then the next moment when the door is open, everybody rush to the 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 tourist attraction. Everybody rush to the casino. Everybody rush to the to the to the uh the the shopping mall itself. If an outbreak at that place, you will just see a second wave of it, and all the effort on, on the twenty eight last twenty eight day itself that being locked down is actually all, all, all wasted. Yeah. So so that that is the, the the big danger of it, and the business will not go back to normal immediately. Even the MCO is leave tomorrow. Okay, so you have still yeah. to be planned for the worst case. Yeah. Everyone here, please remember that uh, even if the MCO is lifted tomorrow, business is not going to go back at normal. The worst thing you can do is have everyone from your office go back to the office and all it needs is one person there or some neighbor that you pass by and that neighbor happened to be a carrier, not much signs, nothing. And before you know it, your office is again locked down. And before we know it, we are back to another 14 days, one month from now. Okay, that is something I think no one wants to have. Now, uh, Zoro has very nicely put up uh, in the chat, put down some uh, areas that we can go and look for it. Okay, in terms of uh, the WHO guidelines, the, the Bank Nagara Malaysia circular on H1N1 that came out in 20, uh, 2011. So please take a look at it. All right, that would be great. Uh, now, I would like to ask this. I would like to ask this very critical question, okay? Um, uh, especially to uh, uh, Henry, because you have done so many of this, okay? What are some of the silver? No, the, the, the key, after all this has happened, I mean, I'm quite sure you've seen a few disasters over a time of 1000 C, right? What are some of the silver linings that come up from this after that is over, okay? What has the company learned? What have people learned, you know? Any good thing that you can come up at least there's some bright light at the end of this. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I think especially for this COVID-19 itself, one of the silver lighting actually on uh, mm. IC is that uh, a lot of them previously is not open to some changes, right? Uh, like for example, e-learning, right? Uh, uh, even up to today, I think there's still a bit of difference that classroom learning versus actually the e-learning itself, mm -hmm. right? But uh, I also start to convince myself that actually there's certain part of the work can be done actually uh, electronically, virtually. Uh, give you an example, right? For me actually to do a presentation to the senior management itself, right? Most of the time the senior management only can have a, a part time that actually uh, like three weeks down the road. But to arrange a virtual presentation that everybody can just sit in front of a computer, and that presentation only going to be like 30 minutes or 50 minutes, right? Can be arranged anytime when everybody log in. So one of these very good things is that a lot of us start to as, as, expose to, to something that we used to be not, uh, not in our comfort zone that we don't want to actually to try out. Like just like I think uh, Zora get yeah, very interestingly mentioned that actually he don't use grab food before and now he, he will do it grab food, right? And I know many of them that actually in in KL used to be not use any of the this uh, uh, Uber previously or the grab uh, uh, because actually everybody have a car, right? When you traveling, someone will come and pick you up. But once you use it, you realize that asking your someone that actually your loved one to come and pick you up uh, was such a but if you get a grab itself, you're only 20 ringgit, right? It's, you, 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 you thought that actually it's always a taxi fare itself. So don't, you never try it, you never know it. So actually with this itself, it allow all, all of us actually try out something that actually very differently. Yeah, uh, electronic working, right? Do you need such a big office, right? And also that the other thing that I realized is that we start to monitor delivery rather than the time that you spend. Yeah, it used to be actually, you, you look at the staff, that very good staff, they come very punctual at 9 o'clock, leave at 6 o'clock or 7, 8 o'clock, then they leave, right? Yeah, this staff is very good, right? But now it's like, you don't see them how long, but it's the, how responsive they are, what are the work they deliver. It becomes more transparent. Who are a good worker? Who do the work itself? Who is only the postman that getting other people's job just passing around? 
because it's become very obvious actually now that uh, yeah so so this is actually really a, a very good thing that we all learn right and uh, not to look at the crisis only on the negative side but what Winston Churchill always said that get the get the actually the, the best thing the uh, out of the, the the worst crisis right so and and we we learn from there that actually uh, how can you from here improve on the work process yeah and you know, Dovap, any, any, any comments? You know, we have been in locked up, lock, uh, say, MCO, right? I always call it lockdown, MCO for a much longer time. Uh, so what do you see as some of the silver linings, okay? Now, anyone who wants to have answered, please, if you've got any question, please ask, okay? I will allow you, uh, allow you to unmute yourself in the next few moments, okay? So please ask the question. That's cool. Right, Zora? All right, thanks. So, well, as, as what uh, Henry has put it, and using Winston Churchill, uh, we also heard of this phrase, in every crisis, there will be victory. And this phase will also pass. This phase will, is proven in, in the whole human history that all this will pass. We have survived. Humans survive. We are real. We are born to survive, right? Until the last day on Earth. Now, the silver lining from my perspective is one is really from the humility part. The humility part has shown that all of us are vulnerable, regardless of who you are, the capacity, the capability. We are equally vulnerable to this. This is an invisible war. We do not know where this virus is and it doesn't discriminate. So that's one thing. So we are all in this together. That is the silver lining that I see. And with this then comes the next part that we always talk about. We talk about change mindset. This has accelerated the, the change that we've all struggled with. A lot of, you know, a lot of leadership gurus, a lot of all the HR practitioners trying to say change management, change management. Well, I think the situation has forced this and make it much easier for the organization, for the leadership all the way down to across the board in accepting new way of working, in accepting new way of, uh, uh, of delivering certain methods, uh, for example. And, and we can see the, the requirements of being more agile and being more resilient is starting to show its real value in terms of what we have been talking about. So, so I see that um, the silver lining goes beyond just this. The silver lining for me is it's a wake-up call that now calls for action across board, across industry, across culture, it doesn't matter who you are, in coming together to work as one. That is one of the greatest silver linings that I see. We are now all in this together and we are all playing a part. Every little part that we do, regardless of your industry and where you are, you are going to contribute to this uh, recovery one. And we are also going to learn how we can start leveraging and tapping on each other's uh, strengths to make things work. Uh, I see a new economic model. If you talk about the workforce, I will see more adoption of a blended workforce where you have more independent uh, skill experienced workers with you on a uh, singular or limited uh, engagement, for example, versus your core permanent team. Going back to Henry's example, yeah, you may suddenly realize that you actually have a lot of post postal people within the organization that you do not need anymore. <laughs> All right? You only need a few certain experience um, uh, and, and those with the relevant skills coming at a certain time. I also see the change in terms of adoption of technology. Something that we've always been feared about. Ooh, I, I, it takes away my job. Well, too bad. Uh, the, the bad news is that technology is here to stay and we're seeing how technology is already helping Many organizations look at China, they've introduced a QR just to track and make sure that you're safe in, in every point to enable contact tracing, for example. Uh, we would have heard of this. We would have, many of us are still fearful, a hey, phone can, uh, put QR, security can. Uh. Well, my, my other details can be hacked. Uh. Well, I think, as I said earlier, let's not be over paranoid about all these things. And, we, and, and there's so many things to learn from this, as I said, I, and I really hope that we can all continue to have a conversation that support one another uh, and, and keep holding to what these three S's that we've been seeing, the three S's in a good sense, uh, in terms of stay home, stop the spread, save lives. 
Very well said. Very well said. Thank you very much. Now, anyone, okay, remember we are saving lives by staying at home, okay? So please, if you've got any question, raise your hand. I'm just going to go down quickly. Eh? If you've got any question, raise your hand. I see a very wide group of people. Um, come here. Okay, I've been wanting to work from home. Okay, okay. okay, okay. Hold on, eh? uh, I'm just going to ask this question from Sudi Mahayudin. Okay. Uh, I've been work. I've been wanting to work from home, and I dream. My dream had come true. Okay, mm -hmm. I became a freelance consultant since 20, 2006. Still, I need to travel to conduct trainings and in various venues. But now, due to the current crisis, training business and delivery would also have changed a lot. What is the best this BCP for a freelance consultant like me to face these new challenges? Okay, anyone would like to answer? Uh, yeah, you see in the chat box. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, maybe I give a little bit okay. of uh, yes, my you. input and then yes. uh, you guys can actually add on to it. Huh? Yeah, okay. I, I think uh, Susie, right, actually on okay. the, uh, yeah. So two things I will actually really recommend. One is that, uh, of course, conducting the training now is like a lot of them will be still have a concern, even the MCO is lifted to, to have a classroom training that actually close contact. So social distancing still will be practiced. So you have to be expect that you won't be able, it's, won't be actually like previously getting a class of 20 or even 40 people uh, is, is too risky. It's not worth it for you and not worth it for the client to do it as well. So likely is that you have to do more, uh, either small class training if you have really have to be face to face, if not, you have to go on to online, okay, online training. Huh? Yeah, so I think this part, uh, a lot of us, you will be expected. So delivery mode and the people communication mode uh, used to be that when someone to talk about something, thing, let's catch up for a coffee and discuss this face to face, that's going to be changed. Okay, yeah, uh, that's one part. Second portion of it is that look at the need itself. What I mean by look at the need itself, the need will change in the first place. When actually the MCO lifted, well, the company first thing think about is doing training. Mm. No, yes. that is not the way. Right. The, yeah. all, the, all the bosses and all the, actually the, the management, the first thing we'll think about is that how do I continue running in my operation? And like all my banker, uh, some of you know me for, uh, will, will, will know that previously I worked in the banking industry. All the, my friend that the banking industry and the, all those actually banker will tell you, right, the, the economy for the 2020 is going to be uh, negative downwards or even going to the recession. So yep. I, I have to, we have to look at the need itself down here, right? So chances is that the need with the market changes itself the demand for, for your from your client will still remain the same, will increase or will reduce. That is the part that you have to consider. Before you plumb into it, say, okay, I can do this, right? You have to look at what is the impact to the entire market and how do you adjust yourself to meet the needs itself, what the, your client require. Uh, then, then you can actually proceed and move uh, further, further from there. Okay. I mean, which, which is what uh, we in Aston are, do, are doing uh, since the impact happened. Uh, personally, you know, I discussed it with my team and uh, we felt that there wasn't going to be much training and consulting work happening for us in the next few months. And this is why we decided to move half the team over to the training side of it, uh, where we are doing, as I mentioned before, medical equipment and masks and things like that. But doing a lot of overseas market, but at the same time still doing some local market as well. Okay. Uh, any input on that since you are also a freelance consultant these days? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, what, I, I what, came into as you say, welcome me to the dark side at the wrong time. Eh? <laughs> 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 uh, well, here I am enjoying corporate life over the last 20 years and jump into the freelance uh, space. Well, actually, mm. for me, uh, apart from what has been shared, I mean, I concur with all of you. For my advice for those who are now in the similar situation as I am, if you can, now this is a question, if you can, and you have heard some other webinars before, if you have cash flow, you have enough uh, cash flow buffer, you can use this period of time to contribute differently. To me, it's about now sharing your experiences. It's an offering help, really from bottom. It doesn't mean that it's going to be monetary reward, but start to help. Uh, don't take it as though this is going to be my opportunity to earn money. No, <laughs> so Henry said, uh, this is not the time. 
use this time to reflect and say, let me offer my experience. I mean, it's, I mean, not to 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 to, to put in, well, to take the spotlight, uh, but this came about for me to be on this panel. Actually, came spark was well, spark off from the last session. Uh, and we talk about how we can recover, and I told Jeremy, hey, look, I have my years of experience, not being a consultant, but actually the one who is running and managing the entire business continuity management plan from doing the business impact analysis all the way to even have to call out the plan because we actually had actual scenario that was planned for it that happened, a fire happened to and, and cut off the access to a building. And, uh, let me use this experience to just share. I mean, as you know, the more we share, the more we grow together, the better the society is eventually. Uh, let the rewards come in later. So just to me, just stay resilient, stay positive, look at what other ways that means that you can contribute. Most definitely. Right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Now, anyone, any other questions? I'm looking for questions. Uh, hold on. Uh, what's the best idea to execute practical training via e-learning? I, th I think that is uh, one question that we can address uh, separately. Right. Uh, now, uh, anyone? Anyone here I'd like to ask a question? Because let me just scroll down into a participant list. Anybody? Because we do have a lot of very uh, people from various backgrounds here. I, 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 I am looking at the names. I know where they are from. Some are very large organizations. Some are small organizations. Quite a few of them are business owners. Not everyone is Malaysian here. Quite a few of them are actually from Singapore. So I'm not sure whether Henry, you're calling your team of people here as well. Uh, quite a few of them are from Singapore as well. So if anyone you would like to ask a question, please do, uh, right? Uh, please do ask questions. And I'm still going to go have, have a quick look whether I missed out anything right, from the chat list. Anyone, anything? If not, you know, we are coming to our uh, 90 minutes. Uh, um, my question to you is this, Henry. After this whole incident, okay, if I'm a BCP person, I'm the one planning for BCP and making all the details out. What do I plan for next? Huh? I think, <laughs> have we covered the whole spectrum? Or is there something else like a zombie apocalypse that you think will happen next? Okay, because I think this black swan event that we had really um, changed the world into a new norm. Okay, things that we did not foresee happen have happened. Uh, it has really accelerated a lot of things that we did not think would happen. As I thought, um, actually, sometime two months ago, uh, during this time, I, I was actually in a room with 30 participants, of which 15 of them were actually CEOs and listed entities. Okay, these were the C level people, of which 10 of them were CEOs and listed entities. I'm not going to mention names here. But the thing is, this was exactly what we were talking about. We were talking about Black Swan event. We were talking about uh, business transformation. We were talking about the need to accelerate IR 4.0. The, the, the industrial revolution is here. You know, 4.0 is here. We need to do that. It's just that what I saw over the last one month is that what was supposed to happen in two to three years down into a month. And it just blew the whole white door open that I still, not only organizations are going to change, whole economies will change. So as a BP person, what is the next thing? Because it's not just getting the company back to normal, but also what's the next thing? Because let's be honest here, I am, uh, the Malaysian economy is going to be reducing by 2%. So from a 4% growth, we are talking minus 2 now. So it's actually a bit shrinking of the whole economy. We are seeing news already of people saying they are unemployed, as I mentioned. And we are going to be seeing some massive um, unemployment once MCO is lifted. So if I'm intending to do DCP, what would be my next step? Anything to be for? Yeah. Uh a few things down here I think we should look at right the, the the first thing is that if you have planned for what we mentioned earlier on to on the based on the impact the uh, the we we won't be able we won't be able to actually uh, forecast or actually have a crystal ball to see what is the next crisis will happen but if you have planned for the impact and the consequences we mentioned regardless what actually happened 
you still will be able to protect your business, the most critical operation and able to continue. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, in, in fact, I want to share a few of these points before we actually end of the, the, this, the day. Is that number one okay. is that although we mentioned about it's a, it's a black swan or actually the gray, gray dino or, or actually uh, e e events, which is slightly different because the, the black swan itself is more on something that actually uh, very seldom happen. People that actually do not, cannot imagine that actually will happen. The gray dinos is actually something that actually when the, the di dinosaurus, actually the, especially the one that in gray color, when they get angry, actually it's a deadly event, right? So when they, they normally actually don't strike, but once they strike, they will actually can even overturn uh, uh, this uh, uh, a car. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's a deadly incident itself, right? So in this case that we look at, if we have 2003, we have actually uh, SARS the outbreak. The pandemic outbreak is, uh, is it something a break swan? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. And also, uh, in in two thousand and five, actually, uh, uh, at that time, the U.S. president George Bush Jr. After reading the the, the Spanish flu in nineteen eighteen, right, he actually and seeing what happened in the SARS, he actually instruct the White House plan for the global pandemic outbreak. And in U.S., every president that took over the the, the seat itself, they have to actually take part in the exercise, six hour exercise to simulate global pandemic outbreak, how US government will actually need to re react to it. We, we're not going to talk about actually, did, did, the, uh, did Donald Trump actually take this very seriously or who didn't take this? I, I, I do not. Uh, there's a lot of the news on the internet. You mm. can do that for the, for the gossip section and, and those things mm. later on, right? Yeah, but the, the, the thing is that this is something that she expected and there's actually multiple source. But the only problem that we're facing is that, did we take it seriously? Did we take it serious enough to prevent the business? I think some of the questions that actually just now some of them asked, I'm a small SME, how should we continue, right? I actually confidently say that if you even have a thousand ringgit, you can do a thousand ringgit business continuity program. Yeah, and uh, we for, for this, if you just focus on COVID-19 itself, Right, uh, like what Jeremy mentioned, right? Uh, we actually design actually two of the webinar section, two hour each, and provide you the template, and you can go ahead and plan for your pandemic response plan. Not the whole BCM, uh, because at this moment I think a lot of them want to do that, and uh, and I happy to extend that. Actually, we do that with our client. I'm happy to extend that actually to 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 actually uh, extend and also your your contact in in this group, right? And 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 you start work on it, the, the biggest investment, I mean, other than the, the two or three hundred ringgit itself, is your time that's most expensive that to, to work on your, your plan that you want to continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Henry, for that. Uh, yes, much welcome. appreciated. Please, you can put it in the chat group or just email to me and then I will email to the back. Okay, so right, right. Yeah. anything from your side? Oh, so for me, um, going forward uh, for BCP or the practitioners who are going to be in charge of looking into this uh, important critical piece of an organization is this. One, I, I, I will see that whoever is this uh, will need to put on a learning mindset and this is going to be an accelerated learning mindset. We talk about the future ready skills. We talk about IR 4.0, Industrial Revolution 4.0. One of the key areas that we now need to prepare and equip ourselves is beyond just knowing what technology is out there. It's really about risk and governance in this whole cyber world. This is another invisible threat that no one can see or feel beyond just pandemic. So the risk and governance, um, the technical capability, for me, is some thing that you need to invest yourself. If you're a person leading the entire, or you're responsible for it, go, uh, equip yourself with that. Two, continue to explore, fiddle with technology out there. Do not be so uh, afraid to, to test out. There's so many RFID solutions, for example, that can help you track who, where is your stuff? Or you can also just have a solution of just get, getting already just turning on the GPS location and keep on checking. You know exactly where they are already. There are technologies that can help you, for example. Um, there's also 3D printing that you can go for those in manufacturing. Start thinking about 3D printing. Every home can now be a manufacturing uh, segment. Uh, we have known, mm. I know, I know I've got friends here uh, who actually help out in designing the, you know, the, the, fuse, the, the shield from home. 
and managed to get it to the hospitals. Uh, uh, so it's all use 3D printing for some and some actually assembling from home. Uh, I know a local university has designed a 3D printer that print out the entire mold uh, off-site. So those are things that we can begin to be more uh, let's say aware and, and discover and, and be ready to adopt them, be technically skilled. And the other part that we talk about is really about who should you then start to focus on going forward. I think you cannot run from the leadership capability, the awareness. You need to equip yes. them with that. And the other five, five areas in organization you need to focus on to get them equally on board to the leadership level of the entire awareness and preparation is really HR, you cannot run away. You play an important part. People's lives is at stake. This is really where you really show that human capital is what you believe in, that people are your asset. Corporate communication, you cannot run away. You have more role to play, as I say, communication, communication, communication. Mm -hmm. yes. IT, you cannot run away. Yes, Mali may not affect you, but you need to look at readiness. Uh, do you even have the, the, the access for your people to work off site from home? I know there are companies who may have the best, but unfortunately, they cannot support the current situation because they didn't think about the access. They think about right. the security, for example. Mm -hmm. The fourth com uh, player, your customer service. Everybody has got a customer. How do you train them? How do you get them to entertain calls? How do you, they respond? It's equally important. And finally, your entire procurement or administration team. Uh, where do they get supplies from? How are they going to, to, to procure certain things? Where, all this, you need to equip these key areas. All right? mm. and, and at the end of the day, as I said, if we have all this in place, people still come first. Survival, yes. It depends on people come first and let's all make business continuity management or BCP a culture in your organization. Everyone remember there's going to be a lot more, I mean, the prediction is there's going to be a lot more um, black swans in the background. Uh, you know, it's going to be coming, it seems to be coming very regularly these days. Um, and because we are so integrated these days, you know, whatever happened in one part of the world affects us somehow or other. Right, please be prepared. Now, uh, I've got uh, Penny on here. If you don't mind, uh, gentlemen, can I just take another 10 more minutes of the time? I promise I'll end this in 10 minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm really forcing them to do this. Uh, uh, Penny, uh, are you online, Penny? Yeah, I'm online. Can you hear me? Wait. Yes, we can. Right? Can you just uh, ask, ask your question here on logistics? Penny? Yeah. yeah. Okay, can you just ask your question directly to, this, uh, to the panelists? Yeah, actually, I want to ask because of the uh, logistic line, it will be very direct affected by uh, any manufacturing or other services due to their business all now was slowing down. So it will affect the logistic line very directly and the cost also getting higher, just like the freight for airplane because there was a lot of cancellation. So we are having mm -hmm. higher costs. Mm -hmm. This might be affected our uh, cash flow very directly. Mm -hmm. So does you have any idea that we can solve for this kind of problem? Because due to the custom, uh, customer was work in-house, maybe our payment also will not get on time. Mm. Okay, right. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. I, I think, okay, let, let's put it into two phases. Huh? First, uh, how do companies in the involved in logistics supply chain industry how can what are some things we can do for bct and one thing i think we did not touch on is there any such thing as bct for finance you know money and so what are some of the things that you can give us in terms of tips for me and also for the supply chain anyone want to want to go ahead first yeah, 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 no problem. No, yeah, I, I'll okay. take that first. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think, I think uh, a few a few areas that we have to look at is like uh, some of the industry after the G MCO lifted your your supply were your workload will increase. Some of them the workload will reduce, right? Depends on right. Yeah, and the increase and reduce all depends on the demand of the industry and your from your client itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh I from the China lockdown itself, after they actually they lifted actually the lockdown for the whole country, or that just yesterday when they lifted actually the final city in Wuhan, right? You see that some of the sector the price shoot up significantly because they they actually have made a loss in the last two three months and actually uh, no income. So at this moment actually all the price shoot up. 
I think Jeremy gave an example about the material, raw material that for making mm. masks and all those things, right? Because yeah. of demand increase, it shoot up. So mm. you have to look at actually on this prospect, right? When when a lot of the when the travel pa the passenger traveling reduced, airline will start to cut the price. Mm -hmm. But when airline actually start to seize the the, uh, the the operating line left only with some of the one that's still flying, the, the ticket shoot up. So this is supply and demand. I'm not the best person to teach you in supply and demand, but for the supply chain and business continuity, this definitely will affect us in the business continuity prospect. So you, you need to actually talk to your client that if their volume is actually going to increase, are you actually because of like the, the air ticket going to reduce or because of the air, the, the travel, the, the flight going to be cancelled and then going to shoot up? Right? So that is something that actually you need to manage your cost very carefully. So uh, we, we, we wouldn't be able to do a business continuity for the finance prospect, but you definitely will need to actually to consider the impact of the loss of the revenue impact of losing of customer certain money the, the cash flow will be slower that impact you definitely have to be considered on it but i can't teach you how to how much money you need to actually keep where to the best place to invest in those areas uh, to, to get the maximum out of the equity market or actually or in in the in the investment huh? yeah uh if you if you're looking on that i have a lot of ex-colleague in the banking industry uh you you can go and contact them right uh Make money or lose money is really up to you what to believe because existing market is actually too volatile for any speculation. Okay, yeah, so uh, so a few things that to consider. Number one, supply chain. Supply chain will definitely disrupt it. Lift it. M MCO, supply chain, you think that YouTube will come back immediately and people will grab on those things either, but your customer will be still around out there now. Supply chain to consider. Number two, cyber security. We're doing a lot of extra tasks in order to track the safety and the security of, of all those people traveling. Like in China, was tracking the mobile phone movement, right? Back 20 years ago, when I worked in the telecom industry, we already can track individual mobile phone movement with the repeater. But there's a lot of security concern itself because I know, do know where you travel at every point of time. It may be being misused for political reason, it may be misused for the security reason, or it may be used by your, by your, by your wife or your husband to track where do you go to, right? You say you go to for a meeting, Jeremy, but, but how come you turn up to be actually in some place that you're not supposed to be, right? Yeah. So, so that is a security concern. So bear in mind with a prolonged crisis, security, cyber security is that it will come in place. Authority use it for the right reason, but then there's some people who use it for a different reason. If the data being leaked to the to the to the hacker world on the uh, dark, dark web itself, right, it will trigger another issue, mm. right. And then the third thing that you should look at is stability, stability of the political environment, your business environment, your staff mentally, and also their financially. So I think that is the biggest challenge that we will be facing. Uh, and I don't think that this pandemic will be over in when the MCO is lived either the 14 day later or, 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 or actually on the fourth, 14th of, of this month, right? Yeah, um, it's going to still take quite a while and we have to prepare for a prolonged crisis. Mm. Yeah. So everyone, so just, a, just, just a quick reminder, uh, it's not gonna be over just because MCO is listed, it's gonna continue. There's gonna be a lot of issues because we are not the only one in this, right? Many countries are in this at the moment. And some countries have not even called for any MCO or circuit breaker yet. They may call for it after we open and then we have another crisis, yeah? Because we may be getting surprised from that. But Zorab, anything that you want? Yeah, to yeah, yeah. So just to add on to Penny's uh, question, yes. well, well, I'm not here to be able to solve you. I'm not an expert in the financial realm or in the logistics, but this is one thing I can offer in terms of to think about. Uh, there's certain things that we cannot do, but there's certain things that we can do now. Uh, one of the things that we can do is to start rethinking the business operation model that you have. Uh, you talk about delivery logistics. You're dependent on your own trucks. You're depending on vehicles going out. Can you start looking into the examples of the Ubers, the Grab, how they utilize not their own vehicles, but to get delivery going. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, you talk about payment. How are you going to get collection, etc.? Can you start looking into e-payment gateways that use credit cards, not online bank? 
so that it enables your customer to prolong their credit a bit longer to pay you. So these are the two things that I can offer. And, and, and finally, if you talk about cash flow, I guess uh, it goes back to financial planning. Uh, you need an expert to help you with that. Uh, uh, whether you put all your 100% into one basket, uh, that's something that you need to approach a financial planner to help you out. Uh, anyone else? Any questions? Okay, any questions? Uh, this is Chong Ming. Maybe it's not a question. Uh, okay. My name is Chong Ming. I actually work in the telecom sectors. Since you have touched down on the financial, I, I shared this how the telecom also handle the financial aspects. Okay. So, and when, when the BC, BCT, BCP activated or the COVID activated, one of the financial things that we look at it is um, to make sure that we quickly captured all the deliverables that is high revenue because you need to have the revenue to survive. So that's one dashboard we start tracking it. I'm sharing also because I think this is a good session that I also wanted to share. The okay. other Thank aspect you. is, um, the other aspects that we are also working on the bigger telecom sectors, where we, in the global telecom sectors is, we also start tracking, it's extended to BCP, it's still related to BCP, is how much revenue matches to the activities subsequently. You need to match, prepare your resources. This is an extended planning. So these are the, some of the things that we actually um, making sure that we are able to survive well. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, just, actually, just Jeremy, can add. I just add on? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Go so go just on. even last yeah. night, uh, for those of you who are diligently now looking at CNN, Bloomberg, etc., even Disney, uh, Disney is rethinking a business model. How do you get their movies out to the masses now? Nobody's going back to the cinema. It's the same thing. Uh, they are Disney Plus. They have only 50 million subscribers. Do they limit to that or is it going to be pay-per-view? So they start sparking new ways of delivering, if I can use it loosely. So yeah, learn from it as well. Yeah. And, and, and if I remember correctly, Disney Plus was actually just introduced late last year or early this yep. year, right? Something All like right. Yeah. So, so, so they must be kind of get a lot of subscribers. Yes, yeah, Henry. Henry? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, correct. Yeah. So I think I think uh, what actually Chongming mentioned that is actually is very important, right? The uh, and uh, business business need to survive. You need to actually to uh, survive to see the sunrise tomorrow. Then you will be able to to enjoy the sunrise or get through the winter itself. And financial is financial staff morale and energy and also the the workload itself is something that to keep them going. Make sure that actually they they actually occupy. Then they actually if not, then next moment you start to looking for a job with other people. You cannot survive as well. So this is very important portion of it. Uh, then the um, we we also need to also think about uh, in in this kind of crisis itself how to actually make sure everybody is actually uh, stay united, right, actually, and then uh, help each other in, in one way or the other, To uh, especially when we come to the prolonged crisis itself. And I, I, I hope that actually it will not, it will be like SARS, by the time they reach May, the, the hot weather itself, it will disappear. But then that cannot because you're hoping it, and then you just actually plan for this, which is not the worst case scenario. You still have to plan for the worst case scenario, which is what we are poor wrong crisis. Yeah. Mm. You definitely do not want to be what uh, Donald Trump was a month ago, Being, you know, crossing his fingers and just saying, yeah, in the hot weather, the virus will kill itself, basically. Yes. So yes. we're facing the plan for it. Now, yes. Um, yes. Everyone, right, thank you very much for being here with us, right? Uh, great pleasure to have Henry and also Zora here to share with us. Uh, I'm still gonna leave the room and uh, open, okay? Uh, I, and I will unmute everyone. Everyone, once we stop the recording, which we will in a few seconds, right? Um, I'm going to unmute the room, okay? Anyone can talk to anybody, but please, if you've got nothing to say, nothing to contribute, please just uh, mute yourself back. Uh, the key thing here is for us to have any discussion off. Okay, right. With that, I'd like to say thank you very much on behalf of the Aston team. Once again, thank you, Henry. It's a pleasure having you all the way from Singapore uh, live streaming to us. And of course, Zora, thank you very much. Always a pleasure to have you uh, with sure. our session because you definitely have a lot of things to uh, input, input for us. Right. So I am going to stop recording now. And to all the participants, right, all the people here, it's a pleasure having you. Okay, uh, Chong Ming, thank you for your question. Uh, Penny, thank you for your question. 
I see a lot of other people here as well, uh, clients and things like that. Um, thank you very much for being with us this morning. And let's hope for the best in the future. Right, with that, can we stop recording? Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Stay I home. Just <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. I